What's going on guys? So if you've been looking for a super low cost lithium iron phosphate battery for your RV, this is something you probably want to take a look at. There's a lot of good things going on here and these things have tested out very well. This is a battery from Seacon. This is a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and there's a pretty good reason why you may want to consider this battery for your RV. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so first and foremost, um, in my research for batteries and trying to find a really good replacement battery for our surveyor, I came across this brand Seacon. Now what's kind of crazy is, is one of the companies that they use to market their products to social media companies reached out to me a long, long, long time ago. I did a search in my email and they basically said, hey, we have a battery that you might want to try in your RV. Now, the reason why I like this product and probably the most important aspect for me is the fact that it's IP65 rated, which means that it is capable of being in a location that could get damp or wet. That's really important to me. They also say that you can put this inside of a boat. Now, why is that important? Because the battery box in most RVs isn't completely sealed. It's not set up in a way to where it is going to keep your battery completely dry all the time. And having a battery that you trust not to get water into it or not to potentially you know, catch fire or have other problems is super important. And again, they claim that this battery is IP65 rated, and that's a pretty dang big deal. Now, when we look at the performance of this battery, I've actually seen several other YouTube channels who have reviewed this brand, and they all perform at the level that they claim. They all perform um, actually to slightly over 100 amp hours, which is really nice. Most of them, I think, were in the 101, 102 amp hour range, which I know is just slightly over in terms of capacity, but that is still a pretty good thing. Now, there are a lot of things that they also mention in their write-up on this product. One of them is that they place the cells sideways without blocking the explosion proof valve. They also put foam around all the cells which helps for impact prevention. They laser weld and secure the battery terminals. They have an insulation board between the cells and the BMS to protect the BMS from interference or short circuits. And they have one millimeter foam between each cell to prevent expansion and compression. Inside of this case, the positive terminal uses a four gauge wire and the negative terminal uses two seven gauge wires and it is UL certified. It has excessive current protection, also low temperature cutoff, and I've actually seen a video where that's been tested um, at negative 15 degrees. Now, some other things that I like about this battery that a lot of really inexpensive batteries don't typically include is the fact that you get your lug terminals up here as well. So this is really nice. You get both your positive and negative. Some batteries actually don't come with these, so this is nice. They also give you your caps for the top of both your positive and negative terminals has a nice carrying handle. Let's go ahead and check the weight out on this. Okay, we have our scale calibrated and zeroed out. Let's go ahead and take this battery. Comes in at 22.6 pounds. So it is pretty dang lightweight compared to an equivalent non-lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay, so some folks may ask why you would want to do an upgrade like this. Well, first of all, if you were considering upgrading to like an AGM battery, something like that inside of your RV, you're probably looking at a battery that's gonna be about $250. If you're looking at replacing with the typical deep cycle battery that comes on your RV with a traditional deep cycle battery, again, you're still probably talking about a $150 battery and a battery that just isn't gonna perform as well as lithium iron phosphate. A big benefit of lithium iron phosphate technology is that you can pretty much drain the battery down to almost nothing without losing voltage or without dropping voltage. And even if you drain it down to almost nothing, you can still recharge the battery to near full. The problem with AGM and standard batteries is typically that once you drop down below a certain percentage, usually like 50%, your voltage will start dropping. Once that happens, you can actually damage products. You can damage electronics. The other challenge is, well, once you drop your traditional battery down too low, it typically won't recharge all the way back to 100%. And that's another problem. So the real issue you run into with your typical batteries, again, is the number of cycles that they're willing to charge, the number of times you can drop them down too low. Also, when you drop them down too low, the fact that the voltage can drop to a level to where it can cause problems with electronics that are tied to it. So these are all things to keep in mind. 
And that's another area where the BMS that's built into this battery can help ensure that the voltage stays the same even if the battery capacity has been dropped down to nearly nothing. Once the battery, of course, is completely dead, your voltage is gonna go away because you won't have any more power left in the battery. But again, the really nice aspect of lithium iron phosphate is just the fact that you can charge them a ton of times, you can drop them way down before any issues happen with voltage, and you can refill them to virtually full again without destroying the battery. And that's a problem with traditional batteries. That's the main reason why I think most people wanna to move to this technology. The problem most folks have is that it can be very, very expensive. Now, a 100 amp hour battery isn't gonna be a tremendous capacity. This isn't gonna be enough to run an air conditioning unit inside of your RV. This is gonna be perfect for those who are trying to run the typical things that you run in an RV. Your slide outs, maybe your 12 volt refrigerator for a short period of time. This is simply going to be a great replacement for the battery that typically comes with your RV at a phenomenal price. One that most people can stomach. Battleborn batteries and some of those other ones are absolutely great batteries. They have tons of great technology built into them, but they're very expensive for a lot of folks who are just getting into RVing. And oftentimes it's something people have to eventually budget for. When you're paying under $200 for a battery, it's absolutely something most people can get pretty quickly if they are looking to make this upgrade. Now, the folks at Seacon do claim that this is a drop-in battery. There are a lot of things you have to be aware of when that claim is made. Typically, when people hear drop-in battery, they think I can just rip out the old battery, I can put a new battery in, and that's it. Just connect this one where the old one was and we are good to go. And that is not true. You do have to make sure that your charge controlling system, whatever it is, has the ability to work with lithium iron phosphate chemistry. If it does not, you can damage your battery and you can even put yourself in a pretty dangerous spot. So we're gonna go out to the surveyor, we're gonna take a look at the solar charge controller that's on there, and we're gonna see if it is able to support lithium iron phosphate. Okay, so I've looked up this specific model from GoPower. This is a 30 amp solar charge controller. Believe it or not, I did not know that this had Bluetooth in it. So this one does have Bluetooth. And this one is a PWM, so this is not an MPPT, which I might switch out to later. But this specific charge controller from GoPower does support lithium technology, which means I simply have to go through the instructions to make sure it is set up to charge with a lithium profile. So basically, it is designed to specifically work with lithium batteries. Now I've gone through my settings. I'm gonna to go to LFP and hit enter. And now I have switched it to lithium iron phosphate technology and we should be good to go. So here is the battery that was installed. This is an Expedition deep cycle battery. We're gonna go ahead and remove this battery and replace it. And the case is definitely big enough to carry a new battery. Okay, I have the positive and negative terminals removed. Let's get these spacers out. And then let's lift the battery out. Here's a perfect example of what I was talking about. You can actually see moisture buildup at the bottom of the box. So this is an area that kind of defines why you need a battery that does have an IP rating on it. And IP65 should be perfect for this type of environment. Plus, where the battery sits is actually a little higher than the base. I'm going to get a rag real quick, wipe that out. So there's a dry spot for the battery to go back in. <laughs> Okay, so I have my new Seacon lithium iron phosphate battery that'll be going in. I'm gonna go ahead and place it right inside of the box. Very good fit. I should be able to put this in the last spot too. Check that out, perfect fit. Now we just need to reconnect the terminals with the included lugs and we'll be ready to uh, test the system out. Okay, so we have our wires reconnected. I'm just going to tighten down our lug terminals. There we go. Let's put the lid back on. And there we are. Cover is back on, nice and tight, fit perfectly. Have the wires routed to the back. Let's go ahead and turn power back onto the battery and go check our solar charge controller. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect shore power real quick. We're just going to check to see if we can open up slides and do other 12 volt necessities off of the battery. Okay, so now we have shore power disconnected. Let's go ahead and put our slide out. 
It's working absolutely fantastic. You know what, let me put the slide all the way out because I wanna check out our refrigerator and see if it is still running. It should be. Okay, Move to the fridge. Fridge is running. Very, very nice. I can turn on higher if I want to kick the compressor on. Very cool. So very pleased with this upgrade for under $200 while it's on sale and slightly over $200 when it goes off of sale. It's hard to think that you can beat the value of a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that is relatively drop in, right? You do need to make sure that your solar charge controller does have a lithium charging mode. Otherwise you can damage the battery. So just keep that in mind. I don't wanna get into the technicalities of specifically why and how. I think it's just important for most people that if they see a solar charge controller, if they know they have the Go Power version of it and you have the lithium iron feature on it, then that's a really, really important thing because that is gonna let you know that you can at least use a swap in battery and just change the settings on your charge controller. Now let's look at what's going on here. So we are looking at the battery, which is 13.5 out, I believe. 91 degrees, and we should have one where it shows charging status. Look at that. So we have 3.2 amps coming in, 13.4 volts. So we are charging the battery and it is in bulk state and it will hit float eventually. I might eventually put a shunt on here so I can see uh, more accurately what the status of the battery is, how much watt hours I'm actually pulling from it, but I don't have a shunt on here right now. The whole point of this video really was just to show the process of swapping the battery out if you have a solar charge controller that does support lithium technology. If and for comparison purposes, if you want to see how much this relatively compact deep cycle expedition battery weighs compared to the lithium iron phosphate battery, which is significantly larger in footprint, this battery is 41.6 pounds. So it weighs almost twice as much as the lithium iron phosphate battery. So if you're looking at a way to reduce tongue weight, or if you have the space to fit more than one, you technically could put twice the number of batteries for the same amount of weight that just one of your standard deep cycle batteries weighs. That's a perk in and of itself. If you're looking for a way to do weight reduction, a quick way to reduce roughly 20 pounds of weight off of the front of your trailer, the very front of your trailer, which really is gonna equate predominantly to your hitch weight, would be to swap out your battery with a lithium iron phosphate battery that weighs significantly less. Just keep in mind, you do wanna look for that IP rating. You wanna make sure that it has an IP65 or above rating, just so you don't have to worry about water intrusion getting into the battery from condensation from driving down the roads and just water spraying underneath it when it's raining outside, you wanna to try to make sure that the battery can withstand that kind of stuff. Anyways, I have me a new shop battery, a heavy one, but this was a cool video. Hope you enjoyed it.